Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Today we've been asked to cover the important topic of areas of refuge. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna use the 2021 edition of the life safety code. We're gonna to head to 7 to 12, uh, which specifically deals with areas of refuge. And so we see right under the heading areas of refuge, we have some enhanced content. And there we see a link to definitions for related terms. So things like an accessible area of refuge, accessible means of egress, as well as the actual definition for area of refuge are all linked right there. We'll also see some discussion about accessible means of egress. We're not gonna go into a ton of detail on accessible means of egress, but if you are interested in learning more about the requirements for accessible means of egress, feel free to check out the other video on this channel that deals with the requirements for accessible means of egress. Um, but it is important to keep in mind that areas of refuge are one way that you can satisfy those accessible means of egress requirements, and that's why that term is popping up. So when we start diving into the requirements in 7.2.12.1, we're going to see a distinction between buildings that are protected throughout by an approved supervised automatic sprinkler system and by buildings that do not have a sprinkler system. So in that first requirement, we actually see that an area of refuge that's used as part of a required accessible means of egress can actually consist of an entire story of a building that's protected throughout by an approved supervised automatic sprinkler system in accordance with section 9.7 and has an accessible story that's one or more stories above or below the story of exit discharge. So what that's saying is that if you have a fully sprinklered building, you can actually count an entire story of that building as an, ex as an area of refuge provided you meet the following criteria. So first, each elevator landing has to be provided with a two-way communication system. This will allow for communication between the elevator landing and that fire command center or a central control point approved by the authority having jurisdiction. Essentially, that two-way communication system is going to allow an occupant who is by the elevator waiting for assistance to communicate um, with people either in the fire command center or that central control point. Additionally, you need to provide directions for the use of the two-way communication system, instructions for summoning assistance via the two-way communication system, and written identification of the location. All of that needs to be posted adjacent to the two-way communication system. So that sub part of the requirement is going to make sure that that occupant who is awaiting assistance knows how to, one, use the two-way communication system and request that assistance as well as know their location so they can relay that information to the person who's either going to help them or send somebody to help them. Additionally, the two-way communication system has to include both audible and visible signals. So, that's for your building that's fully sprinklered. If your building is not fully sprinklered, then your area of refuge has to meet the general requirements of section 7.1 and the more specific requirements of 7.12.2 and 7.2.12.3. I'm sorry, it was 7.2.12.2 and 7.2.12.3. So that first section 7.1 deals with your general means of egress requirements. So there you'll see things like headroom requirements, walking surfaces requirements, and means of egress reliability requirements, as well as a variety of other things. The other two subsections, so 7.2.12.2 and 7.2.12.3, are going to provide more specific requirements for that area of refuge. So I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but you'll see things like requirements for a two-way communication system, requirements for waiting spaces for wheelchairs within your area of refuge, um, requirements for the separation of the area of refuge from the remainder of the building, as well as access requirements. So we want to make sure that the area of refuge is situated in such a way that 
an occupant has access to stairs or an elevator without having to travel back through spaces that they traveled through to get to that area of refuge. There's a number of other requirements as well, including things like signage requirements. Um, so all of those are contained in 7.2.12.2 and 7.2.12.3. But again, a reminder that those specific requirements are only applicable if your area for areas of refuge that are not in fully sprinklered buildings and are not using that full story as an area of refuge. We hope that provided some insight into areas of refuge. For more information about how NFPA Link gives you the knowledge you need to get the job done right, visit www.nfpa.org link.